The question of who runs the internet and how it's run is one of the great public policy questions of our time that has enormous implications for our civil liberties and for the pace of innovation around the world. The internet is governed. I think sometimes we don't think about that when we're accessing our devices and content and applications, but it has a massive infrastructure. It has buildings, it has people, it has institutions, it has fiber optic cable and all sorts of virtual and material resources that require administration. If you think about it in its most simple terms, it's about governing the internet. But what does that mean? It means developing the principles and the values and the norms and to have decision-making procedures to enforce all of those. And it also means having the participation of the governed. And so you have this active participation of incredibly diverse stakeholders like governments, private sector, individual citizens. Our book, The Turn to Infrastructure in Internet Governance, covers a marvelous, messy, multifaceted field of internet governance, but it does it as of almost today. This new book is called The Turn to Infrastructure in Internet Governance, and it addresses the ways in which governments and other kinds of forces are co-opting the infrastructure of the internet for reasons that have nothing to do with keeping the internet operational. We all benefit from an internet that works that uh, we can pick up our, our phone, uh, our computer, we can reach whatever uh, website or computer we need to reach anywhere in the world and get the information or the people that we need to engage with. And that kind of stability and security is critical. Each author is bringing a unique disciplinary perspective. Some are using multidisciplinary perspectives to a range of issues that have arisen in the field as it has become much more complex. Some of the key issues that we're facing uh, are things such as um, access to the internet, who gets access to the internet, and that means uh, who can afford it. Uh, so can people afford access to uh, fixed uh, internet? Uh, can they afford access to uh, mobile internet? Can they afford access to broadband internet? One major issue, and this is borne out by uh, public polling and uh, quantitative studies, is that we see an increasing loss of trust in the internet as well as the institutions that run the internet. This is partly due to high profile public policy conflicts like the NSA surveillance disclosures, like massive data breaches. Another critical issue that we're facing is access for persons with disabilities. It's critically important now that we understand through the World Bank and the World Health Organization that there are more than a billion people in the world living with some form of disability, which means about 15% of every country's population is a person with a disability. So as we're trying to reach the next um, billion in terms of internet users, we need to make sure that uh, the standards are in place for access for persons with disabilities who are blind and visually impaired deaf and hard of hearing, or mobility impaired. Issues around how the internet is governed will only become more complicated over time. We can see that now in a variety of different areas. The question of how internet governance impacts every aspect of our life today is really a key one. It's a key one for scholars, practitioners, policymakers, citizens in developed countries, citizens in developing countries. Considering that all of our systems of commerce and financial systems, economic systems, cross-border trade, as well as our social life is dependent upon the internet. Getting this question right about cybersecurity and about restoring that trust is vitally important both for the economy and for the world. It used to be that studying internet governance was actually on the periphery of many fields, my field. It is incredible Today, it is in the core. And that is because internet governance is part of a broader realm of global governance studies. Health, trade, it is an incredibly changing area. Technology itself, and actually that's at the basis for the book, technology itself is actually helping us understand why these fields are so central today. But the media, scholars in our field, conferences in our field, all of these actors are really capturing the fact 
that internet governance is really central, not just for scholars today, but for policymakers and for citizens everywhere in the world. AU2030 is a strategic initiative that was launched by Provost Scott Bass to look to the future and to try to determine what the core strategic areas of concentration should be from an interdisciplinary standpoint at American University. And the fact that we have um, Laura Donardis and Nanette Levinson and myself here at American University, plus our colleagues uh, in the School of International Service and the School of uh, Communication and the School of Law and COGOD and all the other schools uh, on campus, we have such a critical mass of people who are already studying internet governance. And that's one of the things that we want to do within this uh, AU 2030 process and within our uh, internet governance lab. These issues that are emerging and touching everyone's lives, our children's lives, our families' lives, everyone, these issues are addressed in depth from many different perspectives in our book and hopefully are going to be addressed in our new book project forthcoming. So please stay tuned.